Hey everybody, welcome back to Hydroneer. This is Kitch. It's, uh, well, it's actually day six now that uh, I've been playing. And made a lot of progress. Get you ready to caught, um, ready to get you caught up on uh, where we left off. And there's a lot to talk about. So where we finished up, we had gotten the harvester working and we're producing gold from that. Had a pretty good capture system going and we created some give me some finished product and make sure my video is good and uh, sold those for gold and we're ready to move on to conveyor system and some sort of way to produce um, to produce ore rather than having to dig which is what I've done so I moved the um, the harvester over here and installed a ram drill Let's have a look at the changes to the harvester. Let me get this out of the way. So rather than storing things, just dropping these these extra tin ramps on the ground, I, I place them up in the air somewhere. That way they don't get they don't take off and fly away. And uh, I don't trip over them. And it's just much easier to deal with that way. Okay, uh, so the harvesters up here, I still have it pretty well caged up, keep things from flying away. Uh, I'll just I'll go up the uh, conveyor belt here. We'll talk about that in a minute. So there it is down there. I got a grinder up here, and it's still doing the same thing. Dirt goes in the top. I've got a funnel right there, and then it goes into... Just the one funnel. Actually, there's no funnel here. Okay, took it out. I'm not sure if I borrowed it or I don't need it. It all just comes down on the conveyor belt. I think I was trying to, I had the funnel in there for a while. I was trying to get the, the crucible the mechanism. Before I had the separator here, I was catching it in there and that's why I had the uh, funnel in there, but it's not there anymore. And I do want that. Okay, so the harvester's getting fed over here. It doesn't have a power switch, it just turns on when you put water to it. So that's going good. The next thing I added was a ram drill. So this is a drill, I think it costs about 600 coin at the uh, store in Bridgeport. And you set it right on the top there on the dirt and it pumps out dirt. And so I have it coming out onto this um, vertical conveyor belt and it goes up to the top dumps it into the into the harvester and then the harvester drops out nuggets and then the separator separates out the gold onto this side and uh, everything else over here all right so we want to give it a try I think it's, I think it's ready to go Oh, you know what? I need some tools. I'm gonna run to get some tools. I guess um, I'll show you a little bit about the driving. There's uh, gotta get a little momentum here to get up this hill. Some people like to drive them backwards, kind of forklift style, where you have the turning wheels in the back. I do it both ways. Whoa. I haven't fallen off this thing yet. There's only one store in that little town right there, and it's the same one. I think it's Stocks. find them up there real close within walking distance so I don't even go stop in there anymore. They'll probably add more stuff later I'm sure. Here we are in Bridgeport. If you're going too fast just hit Q and you'll jump out and your truck will stop right there. Okay and I came for let's see some money. Tools. 
5,900, yeah, uh, a lot. I made some really, uh, I made a huge pot of gold with uh, that system. We're going to run it. I'm going to show you the whole thing. How to operate it. We'll make another big pot of gold even bigger. And we'll make something good from that. And sell it, get some money, and expand the system. I'll go ahead and get a few of these. Just, just now, I was testing all this stuff. You know, this was a lot of trial and error, um, which is you know the fun part, but it's kind of boring to put on uh, on a video. I do stream uh, during the day now. I started a streaming channel when I'm doing that stuff. So if you're interested in the, uh, the trial and error part, experimentation, and that sort of thing, you can find me on uh, Twitch. Under Kidge, Kona Kidge, K O N A K I D G E, Kona Kidge. Alright, got that. And now here's where we do our backwards driving. I'm not as good at this, but. If you ever driven a forklift, you'll, you'll, be, you'll know how this works. sharp turn, but not right away. It's kind of a delayed turn. But the longer you make that turn, the sharper it gets and can be can like turn a 90 degree angle almost with wheels in the back like this. The tricky part is learning to, you know, my brain wants to hit W to go forward and I'm having to get S instead. It wants to switch over I'm getting used to keeping it back here. Alright, almost there. Whoops! <laughs> Using W to stop is a little unintuitive for me. Okay, so let's get the tools. I wanted to have these ready because we're going to need them. Things will need repair. Okay, uh, before we get started, let me just show you a couple of things real quick. Uh, the pressure tank we really had to start paying attention to now. Uh, this is the component of the water system, piping system that adds pressure. So I've got some, you can either put bars or the shards in there directly. And so I've had to pay a little more attention to that. I do have some, also some gauges installed down here because I was having some issues with getting the dirt to move up the conveyor belt and some and getting uh, I'll show you later but I, I anyway I needed to check and see what the pressure system was I wanted to know if that was the issue and it wasn't so here you see a zero on the left and then a one you can barely see it on the right and it's in the middle so and I've got a couple of separate lines um, and so I've got another pressure gauge over here for these two lines the for the vertical conveyor belt and the ram drill are on the same line right here. They get fe they get fed by this line and by this um, valve. I need to lock that stuff down. See, and there's another one over here just for the ram drill itself. And then I think, do I have another one for This has its own line. Yeah, here's the pressure for harvester and I guess this one. is being fed by this tube to the conveyor belt underneath which goes through that conveyor belt. This one's actually not in use right now. Alright, so, our pressure system, uh, anyway, the reason I've thought of that is because this filter system right here, it needs repair often. Alright, so here we go. Now, these, this guy, I can't to be repaired already. 
Grab the tools when it's sparking and smoking and stuff. Just come over, click on it, and it prepares it. I'm just gonna leave these right here. And it is on. Now this one has its own switch right there. You can turn that unit off right there. Back. Okay. All right, so there it pumps out some dirt. Dirt goes up here in the top, goes through the grinder, makes it real small, goes through the harvester, the harvester drops it down into this conveyor belt right here, conveyor belt, and separates the components. it's underneath the cauldron like that it's gonna be rickety so I should not have started that until I had the cauldron in place so let me just resolve this real quick this place before was capturing really well without any kind of funnel. I mean, without a... Oh, there is a funnel. around here somewhere. Huh. Wonder where that would be. Lose another one. You know what? I'm not so crazy about that now that I look at it again. It really needs to be right in the middle. Okay, let's back up. Pick it up, 
drive it here again. I think the solution is to get two. is to get two shredders going on more maybe. that run for a little bit. Let's see, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? What else did we miss while uh, conveyor system? Let's see. Well, these are just uh, these are just risers. I call them risers. They call them vertical conveyor belts. The water uh, feeds in. Let's see, where did I feed the water into the first one? Down here at the bottom. Feeds in here and then passes on. It's designed to go to another. It goes through right there, so it can go to any other unit. You can put a conveyor belt right there or whatever, and then it feeds the water up to the next one, up to the next one. Now it did not pass the water on to the harvester, so I had to bring another water line in. As you can see here teed off that line that was feeding the ram drill right here originally. And uh, since the ram drill didn't, wouldn't feed the conveyor, I had to make that line over there for, for the uh, vertical conveyor. So here's the line for the harvester. And then I also split that off to feed the... Actually, it feeds that conveyor belt right there, which passes on to this conveyor belt, which passes on to... Very cool. 
glowy bucket on that. Still doing good on all my capture here. Just a oh, perfect placement. It's just hitting like it's like a spittoon. <sighs> Jiggles a little bit. Okay. I'm from Texas. So Locked down. So, get it just to lock it down. Sometimes it flashes red for a second and then the server updates. That's how you lock down stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, let's see, grinder, shredder, separator, got that. Water pressure, I showed you that. And the gauge, gauge. Air tool shows you that, and construction hammer. So that's all the things that I had written down to show you that happened in this last in this last bit of building. So let's make something from this gold. I did try using um, some comments I could make. I did try using, you know, the tin ramp um, to collect to collect this gold in here. It didn't slide down it very well, so that didn't work at all. We'll have enough here in a minute. Actually, what I'll probably do is pause the video and let this gold pile up a little bit, do a little bit of maintenance. Again, if you want to see that kind of gameplay, you can find me on Twitch. You can see the whole way through. Well, I don't know if it's true everything, but you can see a lot more. That's really dangerous picking up gold nuggets, any nuggets down there without everything locked down. Because if I accidentally pick up the block that those nuggets are sitting on, boop, they fall through, I've done it several times, and right underneath here is my old mine. And it was a mess. There was, you know, ramps down there and an old lantern and it was it was messy. I was in really tight spots and had to unstick a couple of times. There are some far I've been able to work around everything that hadn't come across any game breakers or anything like that. So there's tons of people playing. Very active community, uh, Discord and I would say very active on Twitch. There are some streamers and some of you others. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and let the gold pile up, and, um, well, you won't notice a pause, <laughs> but it, you'll notice a jump in time. Well, I was just cleaning up and dinging along, and look what I found. I think that's what they call it.
think. Found stashed underground. Place in dirt outside to grow plants. Harvest when. Harvest when. Hmm. Grow plants. Okay. I don't want to do it in my dig area. I think this is undiggable ground here. Will it work? Oh, it wants to do a placement. Place in dirt outside. Oh. So maybe it wants... Like... Up here, let's see how our gold is doing. Pretty good. All right, let's go with that. Let's see how the system is doing. Let's see if we had any mishaps, any dirt jumping out or clumping up at the top. Some got caught on the edge there. Just in time for a big clump. That's one little problem that requires a little tending, is the dirt clumping at the top. The other place is, I uh, see a little bit has fallen out here. Not a big deal. The other place is capturing here. Oh, look, this has been literally perfect. Well, it looks like there's one there. What is it? Uncut root. Down here, not too bad. This is really very happy with that capture percentage. Perfect. All right, so we'll let's see how much we got and make a big old necklace. So those crucible, it will not. It, you cannot pour it out. It will not. Even if it tumps over and flips over a hundred times, how that ruby get down here? I cut one no less. Uh, so don't worry about that. Which is kind of a bummer because before I had the separator, I was dumping everything into the crucible, and I learned a couple of things. One, it won't catch uncut gems. They'll go through it. The other thing I learned is that you can't dump it because I had, it was chock full of everything. Uh, gold, shards, iron, 
and since you couldn't dump it I had to either smelt it all together or pick it all out and I'm the kind of I'm the guy who wants to pick most of it out anyway I got the shards and the gems and iron ore and so forth out of there and then smelt it I think I probably smelt a few things that were still in there but uh, that were not gold but <clears throat> for the most part it was all gold so we'll see what we got here let that melt cook down and meanwhile I'll grab this guy and actually I want to run this through the separator again. Actually, I've got enough to make another separator. So that's probably what we'll do, make another separator. Um, so this is going to... We'll make the thing first. And then what I'm going to do is think of a way to dump this back into here to separate the iron from the shards. We'll run another... I wonder if I can pour it into the harvester. Let me see what happens when I do that. Hold on a second. Okay, that's ready to go. There's our mold. I've moved the scale over here. All right, that's worth almost 2,000. 1965. Very good. So then let's cut that guy in half. Then we will, I saw a trick, pick this up, drag it over the bars, oh, you have to do it with the advanced placement, hold down E, it picks them both up, you put them in the furnace, and they melt, and they'll be, I'm sorry, they, yeah, they'll, actually, you know what, I don't want them to melt, anyway. I didn't think that through, but uh, you can do that. So I'll pour this again. Then I'll cut it again. Then I want to keep those two bars. Just right in there. And I get a gem ready. You need two bars for the necklace, that's why I cut it in half. I don't have any big gems. I was getting big gems when I was using the shovel. But I haven't gotten any with the ram drill. And a carpet blacksmith hammer right there. There's my nice necklace. And let's go sell that. Let's see what it weighs is at the jeweler. We're 2760. Alright, so our ingot was worth what what 1965? And for our trouble, uh we make like eighteen hundred. Uh eight eight hundred. Nice. And it's ninety eight point five seven weight. So let's go collect. The sapphire. Let's see what the jeweler wants for this. 2760, right? That's what we saw on the scale. Let's see what, this, what the stock market is. See, necklaces are up. Beautiful. 2767. That's pretty close. Okay. Now with that, I'm going to get a couple more separators so that we can not have to put things through a second time. Pause because I want to show you something. Uh, I'm loading this this truck, and you, to avoid collision issues, it seems the best thing to do is not create a collision issue with the edge of the truck. If I drop that, where see it's clipping over the edge of the truck, it'll be an issue. 
um, or if I go too far forward and hit the truck. But if I see him do this, if I drop it right in the middle of the bed of the truck, even if it collides with other items, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Okay, something to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and buy the mining helmet since I'm just filthy rich. I have like 4,000 and something more money than I can spend. Well, how about that? But plenty of money. I'm going to give that a try. Okay, bought a f couple of more separators and I'm going to install them here. Gonna need a construction hammer to unlock this stuff. Got that right here. And I'm gonna need that spot, that spot, that spot. What I could do, actually, let's do that. Let's see if I can dump this in there and have it separate again and take out the iron this time. part is getting just the right placement. That's not what I want. I could remove the funnel. That's what I want. Is that centered? Actually, that was good, because what it it, it never really, it doesn't really touch the funnel too much, it just pops right in there on the fly. It comes out pretty consistently, the same velocity and trajectory, so that should actually be okay. Now is there any reason not to have it, another separator right next to it? Let's give that a shot. Splitters. Call a separator. Uh, I'm gonna put the dial on that side. There you go. Let's give that a try. Let's see if iron's gonna come out of the first one then shards and uncut gems will come out the second one. I want that to come into a pail, not a cauldron. So we're going to take this guy and put him here. Set. Let's see. Just this time, we'll set this one for this, and we'll set this one for gems, and the shards will come out this side. I can just use my shard button. to go on, so I'm going to hit that. That will keep the and the um, 
conveyor belt from the vertical conveyor belt from operating. I'm gonna dump this bucket that has uncut gem. Well, probably doesn't have them. Yeah, has uncut gems, iron, and shards in it. I'm gonna dump them on this conveyor belt. Probably gonna just dump them into the harvester so that they come out. What? Because if I dump this, it, it's just gonna go in every direction. It's gonna be a lot. So I'm gonna see what happens. Of course, if I dump it up there, there's no shield to keep things from going everywhere. Hmm. I don't need to run them through the grinder and get through the harvester again. Maybe I'll just drop them in there off the ladder. Just walk in there and drop them right there. I wonder how that would go. Let me see what happens when I do just a few. Okay, not that. that looks pretty good. Crouch your fingers. Same thing, crouched in here. Dump right in the middle so I don't get too much collision things happening in. Oops. <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right, that could have been worse. I, I should, probably should have closed myself in there with some tin. Uh, I had a feeling that was going to be gnarly. All right, let's see if it can if it can clean that up. doing good. This one not so much. Yeah. All there. Turn your machines on until all your ca your capture vessels are in place. Boys and girls. I'm not doing this. Gems and iron ore are falling through nicely. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. Mm. Mm, okay, I don't want to move that right now because if you try to set it back down when there's uh, rocks and stuff underneath it, it'll be a problem. It won't want to sit down, so I'm going to clean up this mess. So you don't have to. <laughs> Real quick, I uh, just want to show you how to refuel the uh, truck. I can see in here water is dropped in there. And uh, by the way, uh, there is a fuel gauge on it.
Oh, sorry, I didn't have the headset on. So, I um, wanted to show you... Um, just a second. How to refuel the truck. So, you saw when I was doing that, I was... You might have heard, because it was... The mic was nearby. But you can take a pail and hop up on there and uh, fill it that way. Or you can do something like this. Anyway, you get the idea. Pull up underneath uh, the pipe there and you can make that work. Alright. Okay, I got a mining helmet. Wanted to show, I figured out how to use it. Um, you pick it up, then you target a crystal bar and click it, and that turns it on or off. So right now it's off. Right now I click it and it's on. Click it and it's off. I wonder if it works on just a regular shard. Yes, okay, so it doesn't have to be a bar. And then you hit Q to put it on. Okay, so there's your mining helmet. Got a brim now. I guess. <laughs> well, that's fun. I wonder how long it'll last. Whoops, tripping over stuff. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, I went ahead and got the. All right, welcome back. I went ahead and got the magnet, and what it does is it helps you uh, see how if I press and hold it, it pulls these things toward it into a pile. So that's pretty handy. You know, they were all spread out. Here's some that are spread out. So if I press and hold, it'll all kind of come together. And if I move slowly, I can drag that pile It actually brings it right to the magnet, to the end of the tip of the magnet, not to the dot. So it's it's the end of the red and white magnet that they're drawn to, not the dot. And if you if they're not all following, release and click again. So I'm holding right now, holding, holding, and they're all coming together. All right. So I mean, that, that's that, that's very. I didn't, I, I didn't use the magnet very much before because I thought everything nearby me was just going to zing right to it and I'd drop it in a bucket and it kind of felt like cheating. Um, but that's not what it is at all. So this is... Uh, I'm really fine with this. That's because th what this is really doing is replacing kind of a, what would be a... I would use a broom in a situation like this. And that's essentially what this is allowing me to do in a really a better way than sweeping. I wish I could sweep like this this way. Alright, these little stragglers I can I can get. I pull these two piles together there. Release and click between two piles uh, will... Uh, and remember it's the magnet they're coming to, not the dot. It's kinda tricky. Uncut gems seem to be not as dense as the other and don't respond to the magnet quite as well. Alright, so I'll get these picked up. Um, there is a little bit of a... There is... Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and keep playing, or keep recording through that because... Oh, yes. Uh, because there is... Uh, there's a trick to that. So let me get a cauldron here. So I'm, well, I'll tell you what. We'll do... We'll do, uh, since this is mixed stuff on the floor, I'm going to put them in a pail, and then we'll drop them into the separator. So you want to get so when you pick up, you don't have to move to drop, the, to drop it. So you see where the green circle is up to the right. So I'm going to place myself so that, the green, so that the pail is up to the right from, so I'm going to be that far. So actually what do you do is just pick up the pail and then put your white, cursor over where your stuff is, then drop the pail and it should be right in the right spot. When you pick up, you won't have to move to drop them. 
And here's where you want to make sure that whatever's underneath you is locked down. So, Because if I was to pick up that wooden block that I, these nuggets are laying on, they'd all fall through. And I mean, if there's the nooks and crannies, or there is, in this case, a mine underneath, it would be a mess. Okay, I'll pick up the rest of these. All right, I'm going to start the recording again here and show you again how to use the magnet in an area where stuff's all spread out. Get close to a couple, hold the thing, move it next to some more, and just keep it held. And if it stops working, let go and press it again. And get yourself a nice pile out somewhere in the middle of the floor where you can put a place a pail around it and get a good target to quickly drop them into a container. I'm try to remember it's the magnet magnet they're attracted to, not the white dot. See they're following the magnet, not the dot. Gotta move slowly and I'm gonna let go and release and then the other pile will start moving toward when you do that. Okay. All right, that's actually pretty cool. I wonder now here's I think what it was originally designed to do. If you've got walls up, this thing will reach through walls and windows and things and you got a bunch of machinery and you click this and something's dislodged or something lodged somewhere, it'll get them moving and get them moving along the conveyor belt. And in this case it got it moving off the edge, uh, which I didn't necessarily want, but that's okay. I could have done that a little more purposefully and probably gotten to, gotten them to go where I wanted them. I'm glad it doesn't pull them out of the pail. Notice that. Let's see if I point it at the pail. Does it move them around in the pail? No. Oh, but that, just at that distance, pulled a couple that were out at, probably just on the inside of here that I can't see. Uh, i got to be sure not to click that. Lock those down. Okay, got another nice pile over there. Oh, there's two stragglers here. Let's see if I can get them over the AS. Come on over here. Now I'm going to let go and release and watch the other piles start coming over. Now I'm going to bring those two piles together. I'm going to start close to one. Because they're shards, they're, oops, they're a little heavier. They're a little harder to move with the magnet. And I guess they have less iron in them. If that's what I'm supposed to believe, that it's uh, meaning that the way it works, iron is what responds to magnets, and only iron, or metal with some iron in it. All right, we got more mess down here. So let's see if I can clean up around that cauldron. That would be nice. Yeah. Oh, it does. Oh, look, it moves the cauldron. The cauldron's metal too. In Okay, good. Well, that's realistic, I guess. Let's see what happens here. Does the pail move? Pail doesn't move. It's not metal. All right, that's pretty impressive. You guys want to come with me? Anybody else back there? I bet there is. Back there in the corner. Yep. I knew it. Everybody out here. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Good. Anybody else back there? See, I was watching a, a video earlier today and I saw this being used. He was just kind of sweeping it, you know, slowly through through walls and through into his machines, like the separator where you, you can't see through. <clears throat> like uh, he was doing this. Here and there's stuff moving around in there. Like there's there's a piece. No, it's not. It's part of that. And so you know, while it's moving, that'll get stuff that's stuck on the conveyor, right? That will uh, get it moving. I don't know what's moving around. Maybe this fell out when I was doing that. Yeah, they see that would fell out the edge there. That little piece of iron ore. 
You could you could also just run along these edges and see if anything falls out. Maybe in the funnels or in these edges. It didn't. Yeah, look, see, there was a couple hiding right in there. I'm too far away now. I gotta be closer. Okay, that makes sense. Also, there we go. Okay, I'm pretty impressed with that actually. All right, that's a clever way to solve that problem. Tell you, there's some smart people out there. You know, I think of really clever ways to solve problems, like Dropbox. Dropbox was genius. I mean, he didn't invent that. That person didn't invent anything new. They just took some things that already existed and found a really good way to implement them. I love that concept. Oh, somebody's making noise. What's going on here? All right. So now I'm going to. I've cleaned up, and now what I need to do is dump these pails of mixed nuggets onto the conveyor belt just in front of the sorter so that um, the sorter can sort them out again. But when I when you do a dump like that, man things just go up here just so things don't go haywire out the top and I'm gonna get the smaller of the two let's see if it'll just let me dump it in there see what a mess is right there I still missed the three of them no telling him it flew out the top of course I have the top closed but Still, man, they find their way through the little nooks and crannies between these. You know, this is fit. It can shoot through there, you know, which is fine. It's cool. I like that realism. Okay, so is that the best I can hope for here, guys? Should I do that with all of that? I want to kind of do it with half of it in case something goes wrong. <laughs> try to close myself in there, but uh, yeah, it's not going to work. Well, let me try something. Just in case. Try one more time and get it to place right here. Five times that many, it'll be 15. Okay, cross your fingers. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Could have been worse for sure. I can use the magnet to get those off. In fact, you know what? I think I did before I turn the conveyor on. Just to get them off the edges. 
out of those nooks and crannies before they wiggle their way down. mistake right there boys and girls always make sure your buckets are in place before you turn the machines on good damn shit alright it's time to add the other separator which I've got right here. There it is. And so the first one's going to be gold, second one will be iron, third one will be shards, and then we'll end up with uncut gems. So I think I'm going to. I'm going to end up buying conveyors anyway. I think I'm going to have better luck with the conveyors. And I can add dirt. So let me show you a little trick I saw somebody doing. Pick up some dirt on your shovel. Set it down on here. And then you can direct the... nuggets to the center that way. So, I'm going to go get a couple of conveyor belts. Actually, guys, I'm going to wrap it up right there. We're a little over an hour. Sorry about that. And uh, we covered the ram drill. Don't forget, you can turn that off and on. It's got a switch on it. Um, the pressure gauge to make sure you get enough water pressure in, in the, your water system. Uh, the conveyor uh, system. The uh, vertical conveyor. 
stack those up. The grinder, the shredder, and the separator will go into, uh, I'll show you um, how to dial those in for separating all, all the different nuggets out next time. Uh, under water pressure, we also talked about the gauge and the valve and the repair tools. Be sure to keep you know one, at least one of those around. You can also buy the spanner. I didn't show you the spanner, but in the uh, in the store, in the tool store in Bridgeport, you can buy just a little wrench, and it's like a single-use um, repair tool. Um, so you'll probably buy a few of those before you buy the the repair tool because the repair tool is kind of expensive. Uh, and the construction hammer, keep a few of those around, and plenty of weapons ra and tool racks because they're so easy to kick if you leave them on the ground and get misplaced. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying Hydroneer, and uh, hit the like and subscribe if you want, and uh, we'll see you online. Aloha.